All right. I you guys that. need to start reading the instructions and following the instructions. And then if you don't get service, like you go to the store, okay, you don't get service at the proper service, what do you do? You complain to the management. You take it up the chain. You will eventually get what you want. All right. You don't have that. to be. You don't have to be totally abusive, using too many swear words now and then. But basically, you can get it up the ladder there, okay? And you can get those numbers. Other people have gotten them, and they haven't gone out there and had anybody else call and inform or anything like that. I told you, you need to try and get an understanding of who you are first before you go and try and help anybody else out. Right. If the other people don't want to listen, hey, they're dead. They're gone. The vampires have control over them. You can't bring them back from the vampire world, okay? They've been bitten, and basically, they're beyond hope. They can't recover. Go watch a couple of vampire movies, especially the ones with uh, about Blade there with uh, uh, Wesley Snipes. Is it a wooden stake also that uh, is their nemesis? What? Isn't it a wooden stake also that is their nemesis? No, the wooden pencil. The pencil is mightier than the sword, okay? Ah, okay. Yes, that's what the term, what the correlation was about the wooden stake, was basically the wooden pencil. Okay. Hey, how you doing, Patrick? Okay. Now, everything out here is about we are a private American international bank court, or we are a bank. Now, in America, there are several songs out there, and basically there are songs about other countries, about the banks and shores of the country. Well, who is the bank and who is the shore of the country? The man is the bank. The female is the shore of the country. The man goes out and with his labor, he makes the deposits. So someone has their, their mic on and is doing dishes or rattling something in the background. Could you please star six your, your way to us so we don't have to hear that? Okay. okay. And then the woman is basically the shore, okay? They shore up the castle, the home front out here. So they're the shores. But now they turn around and did everybody in by trying to bring everybody in and making them a bank in the scenario out here because the man did not know how to go and bring uh, his wife's dowry into his estate. Into his castle. So everybody out here is operating in separate castles. Even though they're living with one another, they're operating in separate castles. See, you never knew how to become a husband and wife. You never knew what the laws were. People are running around here trying to play with common law and uh, with uh, uh, there's codes of law and everything else. They never understood the basics of law, the common sense law, the laws of right and wrong. 
you think you know them, but basically you're out here arguing something that is, in a lot of cases, counterfeit. That's what this whole other world is that they have created, is a counterfeit world by the 14th Amendment. Criminal law only is to be dealing with people that have caused direct harm or have threatened the community in some harmful way. But a traffic ticket and half these other seatbelt violations, how can they become, become criminal law? They can't. They're counterfeit criminal law. The courts do not have a jurisdiction out here. I've gone to every court out here in this country. And basically, they have no jurisdiction over equity. We're the only court that has jurisdiction over equity. That was given back to us by the 11th Amendment. But they had to try and find another way to take it away from us. And they did that by the 14th Amendment, by creating these other uh, counterfeit instruments and organizations, governmental organizations. Now it's all counterfeit. And it's a conspiracy to defraud the living. You guys don't realize how powerful those documents that I've been putting up there are, really. You don't understand them. That's because in a lot of cases you really do not understand who you are and which world you're supposed to be living in. And I know there's several different worlds here, but basically uh, levels in the playing field. It's like we're playing a three-level chess game. In a lot of cases, most of the people out here probably haven't ever heard of a three-level chess game. Now, we have the power, and see, we have to basically process our items through our court out here first before we take them anywhere else. Now, who gives you a ticket? Is it the individual or is it the police officer? Who makes the ruling? The court officer, judge, or, uh, and sends it out, the clerk of the court, or the individuals? Does it ever come out with the name of... In the name of the judge, uh, Tom Smith, this action is to be taken? No. It's in the name of the court, the office of court. Everything in the public world, in their world, is by office. Now, you have an office, sir, of your court also known as your private clerk of the court. When you send letters out to these guys or faxes, whatever, you send them out as this is coming from the clerk of this court. You do not put Mr. Patrick Devine or anything like that on that. When you sign down below for a authorization, yeah, you put your name there, but you do not send it out uh, by, in the name of Mr. Patrick Devine, clerk of the court. You just send it out from the office of the, the private office, or just say clerk of court. And basically, like any courthouse, they've got several different court cases going on, and basically that means that at the same time, that means they've got to have more than one clerk of the court in that court. But 
one clerk, if there's just one clerk of the court for the county, uh, basically she can't handle all the courts, especially like in uh, Orange County or something like that. They have multiple uh, clerks of the court. Well, you have the same thing in your household. There is multiple clerks of the court in that household under that and basically this it goes back to when we were doing the address change forms. There was a uh, three letter notation on there. T M B when you change to a new address, what is your P M B? Your PMB is your private mail bank number. Your depository bank number. But it's your private mail bank. Okay? That's where you get your mail delivered. That's your PMB number. And that also gives your credence that you are an American banker. Because we have a mail box or a mail bank. It's supposed to be a safety deposit box. Okay, because if anybody tampers with the mail, they're going to go to jail. Or at least they're supposed to. And then we have, we're coming in, and uh, I'm working on a court, a uh, private court document, hmm. the judgment in a private American international court of equity. See, we're the only court out here that really has control over equity. Man, the court of man is the one that has control over equity. They can only bring a civil charge from an individual to an individual. Or in criminal charges, if you have intentionally harmed somebody or something. Or the community in some regards. And that is sort of open up to uh, a little better interpretation than most people have of being a threat to the community. But the counterfeit courts utilize that in a lot of their scenarios under all of their counterfeit laws. Those laws do not apply to you. They can only apply to a fiction. Because in a lot of cases, they're violating the living individual's rights. So they can't apply to you. So you've got to stop giving them credence that their laws apply to you. That's what I put up there was that affidavit, uh, counter affidavit. And I was making it, putting the word American counter affidavit of a private American international banker slash trader. And then it's a notice to all public governmental uh, court and court officials. When you start standing up to these people, basically you can see start and start opening your eyes in the right regards out here that everything is operating in counterfeit. Why did things take place at certain periods of time in the history of this country? Why did they set up the Secret Service before they brought in the 14th Amendment? Because they knew that they were going to be bringing in all this counterfeit system. Okay? It's all counterfeit. Your certificate of live birth. Think about it. Certificate of live birth? Wait a minute. 
That was mine was issued on June second of nineteen forty nine. But I've got I was born in the hospital on March second, nineteen forty nine. I do happen to have my original hospital birth certificate. So what is this certificate of live birth? It's a counterfeit. It is not the true birthing. Your driver's license, is that really you? No, it's a counterfeit of you, a copy. Your title to your vehicle. You have the ownership document, the ownership certificate, known as the pink slip. So what is this title, certificate of title? It is a counterfeit. You were given the pink slip at the sale. The certificate came about later. So it's a counterfeit. They are the criminals out here. Think about it. They take you in on a seatbelt violation into their court system. Do they have jurisdiction over you? No. But you have to come in and you have to make your court ruling that overrides theirs because you're in the living world, okay? But you have to do it as a court. So you have to do your ruling. Now it becomes a court to clerk scenario once it gets into their court system. You're on one side of the counter and they are on the other side of the counter. But they're in the public side. You go into a store. You have a counter in the store. The owner of the store is standing behind the counter. He is in the private. Everybody else on the other side of the counter is in the public in that store. They're the public shoppers. Does that uh, private owner of that store have the right to sell to them or the right to deny them? If they are a total private store, Yes, they can refuse to make a sale. Now, if they're a public store under an EIN or under uh, some other uh, controlling item that basically is over the counter or sitting upon the counter, then you have to make the settlement with them. You have to give them service. Okay, this goes back to uh, uh, the riding on the bus back in the 1962 era. See, people don't know how to break down all these things that we've seen out here take place in this country. Because there is a one hell of a lot of big egos out here and basically people thinking they know the law and they really have no idea about what law really is. Just like the Bible. They have no real understanding of what the Bible is really saying. Only what they've been told or uh, were forced to believe. Now, in our court system... Okay, our private uh, court that we have, we can do two items in our court of equity. We can handle two court.
court actions. One is bankruptcy, the other is probate. In equity, the bankruptcy courts that they have out here are all counterfeit courts. They're not true courts. I think the U.S. Marshals knew that I was pretty close to understanding that when I called down upon the bankruptcy judge in one case. And then they tried to say that I was threatening that judge. And I stood him down on that. How can you threaten someone who is violating the law to begin with? They are the criminal. So when you see in this counter uh, the overt action, okay, You need to put that in if you've got any court case coming in. You need to do the affidavit out there. You need to get a handle on these things, and then you come in. Now, the jurisdiction of our court. I'll read what I've got on the first part here. Judgment in a private American international court of equity as a bankruptcy or probate court action. Jurisdiction of this court, the jurisdiction of this court, a private American international equity bank court, is based upon the fact that we, the people, are the bank source of government for the United States of America. And the fact that per the 11th Amendment of the Constitution, the courts of American equity were returned to the people. Therefore, this private American international equity bank court, and that bank is BAFC, is one of those courts that can issue private counter rulings. We rule behind the counter. We're the owner of the store. So we make our ruling behind the counter. The equity court rulings, if not honored, will then be supported and enforced by civil actions in the United States Federal District Courts, the United States Court of Claims, the United States Court of International Trade, or the International Common Law Court of Justice, which was just set up in 1912. But it will be under civil actions. That is where one individual goes after another individual for causing harm. We will then bring them out of their office as the individual. See, right now they're operating under the protection of office. They can only deal with office to office. That's why when we send our faxes out, it's going to have to be coming from uh, the clerk of the court, our clerk of the court, under our PMB number. You get them to recognize that now because, see, they're throwing most of the paperwork away that comes in under our name. They don't have to look at it, but they do have to look at it when it's coming from an office. You basically submit your documents in the court coming in from your clerk of the court. You have made a ruling, a judgment ruling, in your court. Now your clerk of the court takes that ruling 
and submits it to this other clerk of the court to enter into their court. Now, based upon the motions, and then we're going to come in and we're going to terminate this stuff because it's all been counterfeit. But we have to get a proper understanding of how to go after these guys and what we were missing. We've had bits and pieces of this. I mean, what the heck? We were doing the, the 3575 form about a year ago on the PMB. 3520. 3575. That is the address change form. Okay, that's the PMB number, our bank number, our uh, private mail bank number. It's a nine digit bank number. And in America, you have to have a bank routing number. That is nine digits. So that's what the zip code, the five digits, plus then your four-digit box number is. So basically all of these, have basically they are a boat. B-E-N, write this word down, B-E-N-V-O-L-E-N-T. B-E-N-Z-O-E-L-T. B-E-N-E-V-O-L-E-N-T. Is that benevolent? Yes. Okay, good word. There's also eleven C, okay? Look those two words up in the dictionary. What's the second word? V O L E N C E. Oh volent, okay. Okay. And basically it is talking about uh giving a gift, okay? A charitable gift. We have to bring them out and say, hey, they are not a charitable organization. They are a for-profit organization. Therefore, they, are, they have to pay the taxes. But see, they're trying to operate as a charitable organization. All of these private uh, or public corporations out here. Let's see the government that is under the 14th Amendment. They're a for-profit organization. Therefore, they are also the beneficiary of this. Eleven. Whatever the hell. Okay? So when you read that, and then you have to claim this. Now, they're the ones that are in violation of not paying the taxes. We, as the living individuals, we're behind the counter. You go into the grocery store. Who pays the taxes? Does the store owner pay the taxes? No. The one out in the public on the other side of the counter is the one that has to pay the taxes. See, you just haven't figured out which side of the counter you're supposed to be on. You've never learned how to be a store owner. You've never learned how to be a banker. You've never learned how to run a court. They've given us all the court documents we need as templates. Hey, Patrick. Yes. Do you think in light of um, this new technology with uh, counter signing and 
by way of the clerk of the court in the back of the documents that it would prove beneficial to um to relook the information you had up regarding the ribs at USP at the USPS, the judicial office processes. We, we well, have you a can success with that. You, you can now we have the counter signing. Uh, you can go back and look at that, and if you want to incorporate anything out of that into this, yeah, I've tried to bring forward uh, some of this information that I put out there in the past over the last four or five years, now trying to pull it all together into these court cases. Yeah, because you have charges here in this in that, that file um, to be submitted to the postmaster and different now but see we're not going to the here. postmaster okay we don't need to go there we need to go into the public realm the 14th amendment and basically put the charges against them and we're going to be doing it as a uh okay we've got everything we are operating out here under a uh, we have given them by signing a uh, certificate of live birth where our mother became the undersigner, okay, as a guardian. Okay, she undersigned that certificate of live birth. So she became the undersigner as a uh, guardian. Now, you've got your driver's license. You sign below uh, the name in all capital or basically capital first letter, I don't care which, and the number for that item. You signed under it. So you have an undersigning on the front side of that document. Your certificate of title, your mortgage, you have an undersigning on those. You can revoke all underwritings out here. And then you do a judicial writ of ejectment and possession. Your court orders the, your private clerk of the court to issue these judicial writs writ of ejectment and possession. And you send them out by either fax or by uh, mail and you three uh, 46 cent stamp I don't care what okay you don't need to do certified mail or anything like that you just have to make a certificate basically stating that from your clerk of the court that it was mailed now once it gets deposited in the mail system it's now deposited it's now the responsibility of the postal system to make the delivery. You also have your electronic fax confirmation as delivery has been met. But you should always send it out by mail along with the fax. And just use the 46 cent stamp, not the certified mailing. We've been cutting our own throats in a lot of this stuff and basically utilizing, uh, spending uh, extra money out here when we shouldn't have been. Using all these uh, uh, green cards and all these uh, certified mail and uh, registered mail and all this garbage. When the hell did all that shit come into place? A lot of it in the 1930s. I'm sorry, just repeating that. It was writ of de dejection and what was the second? Writ of ejectment. Oh, ejectment. Ejectment. 
E J E C T M E N T and possession. See, you have to eject them off the land, and then you have to take possession. Right? You can look up those things in writs in the dictionary to get an understanding of what they're really saying. But that's basically what it is. You get them off your land, and now you take control of your land. Is there a correspondence between writ and right? W-R-I-T, okay? You're doing a judicial writ. Okay. Something that is written, okay? You're giving them a written document. That's what a writ is. It's a written. It's on paper in black and white. Think of these things simply, okay? They're not that complicated. But see, everybody out here has to try and make things overly complicated because that's the way they, their mindset works. Oh, it's got to be complicated as hell. It can't be simple or else somebody would have seen this. No, it's the simple things that basically people do not see. And then we will send this out to our state uh, Secretary of State, uh, the Federal Secretary of State, the Federal Treasurer, uh, Secretary of Treasurer, and, or Treasury, and the uh, Treasurer. And then also the state treasurer. And then also uh, the federal and the state attorney generals. You can also send this in uh, your affidavit in and basically tell the IRS to back the hell off. Or else you will bring charges against them from your court. And you will take them into a court of equity. Or not at court. Your take, your court is the court of equity. You you will take them in on civil charges, okay? They try and come in and do a criminal charge against you. The three hundred dollar penalty is a criminal charge. You do a countermand on all those and send them back to them. It's like I said last week, it's the burning match theory. You're be on the public side of the counter. You're behind the counter. Now you strike a match and you hand it over to the public side. You're in the private. They're in the public. You hand the match over to them in the public side. Now they're holding the match. You don't have to take that match back. And at that point in time, they're holding the match. They're going to get burned when it burns down. And that's what they need to basically uh, say, well, okay, I'm out of this store. Uh, This court case is dismissed because you just caught them. They will drop the match on the floor and get the hell out of Dodge. Because they do not want to get burned. Because basically counterfeiting and also conspiracy to defraud basically carry jail time. Do you have any comments? Okay. <clears throat> Does everybody understand what the hell I'm saying here? Okay. 
Yes, I think the big thing is that we're, we need to work office to office. That's that's the big revelation. Well, yeah, and basically that's one of the key things out here, but it's not the only thing. You have to understand what your office is, okay? Yes. Your bank. You are a Bank of America. You are one of the banks of America. And basically around every nation out here that is uh, especially like we've got the West Coast and the East Coast. We have a whole bunch of banks on the West Coast and the East Coast, don't we? And then we have a bunch of shores out there on the East Coast and the West Coast because we have water there. So we have a bunch of men and women on the West Coast and the East Coast. The banks and the shores. But then we have inline, inland banks and shores because of the river banks and the lake banks and the lake shores and the river shores. So basically we've got men and women stationed all across the country. You have dry lake beds out there. Well, basically a dry lake bed basically had banks and shores around it. That's good. That you, the male, is supposed to be the banker of America. And then the women were supposed to be the ones that shored up the home front, the castle. They kept the fires burning. But see, most people don't really know what a true marriage is all about either. I hope that uh, basically I haven't offended anybody out here in uh, trying to put this understanding out here. You have to wake up. Yes, a lot of people have spent a lot of time, but they've been on the wrong track, the wrong path, because they have fallen into the trap of what was set up to trap everybody into the system, so and then you're going through a maze, and you can't get out of it. So you're going around in a circle. So we need to be taking the documents that we send in before and convert them to court actions? Like, well, like you, a, need to, you need to do a court action yourself. You do a private court action. Okay? This is just between you and you. Okay? Okay. You write up your court ruling. Okay? You're the court. Okay? It's just like, and you're submitting into your court motions and uh, court motions. Basically, you have by free will of choice. See, this is a probate court that you're handling. And the only one that has a free will of choice is the living individual. The fiction, your bankrupt, has no will. So now you're standing in the court. You, as the living, have presented your living will of choice as the plaintiff against your fictional person, the defendant, and he can present no rebuttal to the motion because he is an artificial or counterfeit person who has no will to present.
Therefore, there is only one valid will existing, and that is the plaintiff's free will of choice as a decisum, D-E-C-I-S-U-M, as a decision, this court has to stand by the precedents and not to disturb what has been settled in the laws of ages. Therefore, this court can only rule in favor of the plaintiffs, you and the nation. Your other counter plaintiff is going to be the United States of America using the true national currency of exchangement. Therefore, then you get them in and basically now you put them into their civil offices as the United States of America under the initial charter, the Constitution, but now they're standing in their civil capacity, not in their criminal capacity. The 14th Amendment, courts and offices that are out there. Now, They have to uphold the laws of ages. And they can't disturb those laws. It's not all about common law, okay? You use common law, and basically they can use common law against you. Because you're operating in two different worlds. You're operating in the criminal common law, and then you're operating in the civil common law. Their counterfeit criminal common laws are in the codes. But that's where you have to have your court of authority Because they're all fictions. You're the living. You're the only one that can turn that document over and put a countersigning and a counterman and counterclaims on the back of that document. Okay, I hopefully I've explained this well enough. You guys can listen to this audio uh, several times over, okay? Okay. I'll take a few minutes of uh, uh, questions, and then I'm going to hang up. Okay. 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 Uh, well, I've, what I was referring to, it, it, it appears to me that this is for the uh, get, getting a hold of our account, or uh, do we this still hold This is for it? anything, Tom. For, so for when we're going after our mortgages, we still hold the court You have on to ourselves. make a bank court. You're the private right. court. The, you're, that mortgage is an equity document, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so you have to give the equity ruling out of your court of equity. You okay. have to take it into probate. Or as bankruptcy. Right. Okay, and it's equity, a judgment can... in a private American international court of equity as a bankruptcy or probate court action, okay. but it has to come from your court. Yes, and I, in in my court, I can declare it as a counterfeit instrument. Yeah, and they you'll also acknowledge it into their court system, but you make the ruling in your court system, and then yes. you give them. Uh, you have the clerk of the court in your system issue out the writ of ejectment and possession. Okay. You eject them off of that mortgage. 
basically, the, I've told you for years now that that mortgage is fully paid for at the end of three years. The yes. bond, it's an insured item. It's an insurance policy that was only supposed to last for three years. We've got confirmation of that in the dictionaries <clears throat> out there about the comptrollers have to remove the bonds. That basically the Federal Reserve debt dollars can only stay in circulation for three years. That's why they change the money system. But they try and get you to issue new debt money. Okay? Counterfeit money. Then you become the counterfeiter. So then you involve yourself into their conspiracy. And so uh, property ta properties that I lost through taxes, I can still, ta tax sales, I can still eject them from that property. You need to get a handle on just doing one at a time, okay? Okay, okay. Whether you go after your all your items that you have out here right now in hand, of all the counterfeit certificates, you can always turn around and file uh, charges back against them later on. Okay, in one a at a time. Civil action, okay? Okay, one at a time. I got it. Well, but basically, when you do your one, you're coming in under the driver's license, the certificate of title to the vehicle, the certificate of title to the house, the uh, voter registration card, the certificate of uh, live birth, uh, the right. uh, DD-214, your marriage license, uh, your all your different state licenses all in one court document. And then, like I said, you, I've got basically that my clerk of the court is going to have to issue out uh, judicial writs of ejectment and possession to uh, the state uh, treasurer to the state secretary of state to the state uh, attorney general then to the federal uh, secretary of the treasury to the treasurer of the United States uh, to the uh, United States secretary of state to the United States attorney general then also to uh, the uh, basically to the uh, vicar general at uh, New York City for the Church of Rome, and also uh, to the Vicar General at, uh, since I was baptized Roman Catholic, to uh, the local uh, diocese, Vicar General. Under a baptismal certificate. We were already baptized at birth. We were baptized in blood. This water baptism is a complete counterfeit. A marriage license is a counterfeit document. The actual marriage of a man and woman being certified is by the father of the bride, the bride and the man, not even a minister. They have no jurisdiction to marry anybody. The father gives up the daughter to the man who takes the wife into his estate. She now has to shore up his bank. So you're just doing a bank-to-bank -bank transaction. You still having to dowry. Yeah, you've got to transfer the dowry along with the woman, okay? But see, nobody ever did that. That's why I say most people don't know what a true marriage is about. 
They don't understand anything out here, really. Because we've all been deceived out here by the churches and the states and the money changers. Well, uh, I got some pretty good paperwork. And um, I was reading it over, a lot of them. And I pretty much like them. In a way, you're just getting us to see that these guys, they, they, they have lied about the ownership of whatever position that they have because they really don't have any. They work for the District of Columbia, which a lot of people won't read that one either. Uh, you actually showing people that we, they are doing everything phony. And they only put in fear in us to make us believe that they have some kind of authority, even when we address them. And what we're doing, we're addressing them in the wrong manner. Because Yes, everybody has been addressing them with the wrong thing. Because right. see, most people never understood. Uh, they go in and they quote uh, different uh, amendments <laughs> out here, but they yep. I've never heard anybody out here quoting the 11th Amendment. Nope. Nope, neither okay. have I. Neither have I. But if you go in there, if, if people be fighting their own names, and I was like, you know, what's, look, you don't have to fight your name because of what they want anyway. It's a conflict. And some of the movies you even gave people to, to look at, I mean, like uh, Interstate 60, if you look at that movie real, really, really good, you can pick up a whole lot of stuff that the judges and lawyers and all of them, they're elbows with one another, okay? Now, here it is. You're an outside voice coming in, which you're the living, but you don't know you're alive. That's a very yeah. loud keyboard. And, and they treat you Please like you're yourself. dead. You know, that's, that's what gets me. But it, like you said, the people, they have no idea what they are. If they only go in there, and because once you know these guys' position, they're public workers. They're not supposed to open up their mouth. They're supposed to have a service, and they're not supplying that service at all. They're bullying you to make you think that you're underneath them, but yet you are above them. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what you can say to people to get them to believe that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and log off and let you finish. Okay. Anybody else got a quick question? Bible question, Patrick. Okay. Uh, when Jesus said, give to Caesar what you owe Caesar, was he talking about countersigning and giving them the papers back, passing them back over the counter? Yes. Okay. I what, did, what, what did he do in the temple? He turned the tables on them. Right. Isn't that what it says? He turned the tables on the money changers? Right. He handed the documents back across the counter. He put it into their hands. They did not like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. They didn't want to get those documents back. The traffic ticket. Basically, you just do a counter signing on it, and you can do a counter man and a counter claim on the back of that. And see, you are the court of equity. You can make the decision to make the sale or not. You're the private owner. Okay? You don't have to be operating under all of these other uh, codes of law out here that you have to make a sale to a public official. Okay. Especially if it's fraud. You make the determination of fraud and you rule accordingly. Hey, Patrick, this is Steven. Yeah. Uh, when we countersign or counterman 
their documents or charges, do we make a copy and return it, or do we sign the original and just make a copy of it for ourselves? Of which one now? It, like, if they send you a bill or charges, you know, for their stuff, do you, do you just sign it and send back the original that they sent or presented in the mail to you, or do you make yeah, a copy? Yeah, you send, send them back them? the original. You do a countersigning. It's basically yeah. the match has been struck. Okay? Right. So now they handed the burning match to you. You have to take that document that's on fire and do a countersigning of it and send it back to them or else you're going to get burned. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I was just curious, so like, if we had to keep the original. I mean, it, it no, is like no, evidence of, keep, of a counterfeit. We keep a fit. copy of it. We keep a yeah. copy of it and basically uh, we can certify anything out here. We don't go to a public county or to a public notary. Right. Okay? We have our own clerk of our court who will be our notary yeah. in the private. Now, we don't want to give them authority over us. You do a public notary and you're giving them jurisdictional control over you. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any more yeah, questions? I yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, this is uh, Mike from Chicago. Um, okay. Patrick, um, I was looking at Rule 17, and uh, a while back you told us, and I was in the military, and uh, in the military our, 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 our last name was always first, and then our you know, they're not given names. Oh, let's don't so, argue because, about the name, okay? I'm not, I'm not really no, no, listen to, me. listen to me. Listen to me. I'm short on time here, okay? Okay, good. I'm going to try and explain this to you, okay? okay? The name does not make that much difference, okay? okay. Everybody out here has been arguing the name, 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 name. No, mm -hmm. it's the account number. And basically, for a military person, it initially started out as a counterfeit certificate known as the selective service. Okay? You are already under an obligation to the country mm -hmm. in the private to, to support and defend the country until you turn 25. You did not need a counterfeit certificate to tell you that. Okay? This counterfeit certificate basically gave them jurisdictional control over your assets in the military. And basically they uh, started setting up an insured contract under that selective service number. So everybody that signed up with a selective service number does have an insurance policy there and that's what I told people about that war risk insurance back in 1917 uh, and 1919. Uh, okay, out of uh, 1919s, out of volume 41 of the statutes at large. I posted that up on the group site that there are two uh, war risk insurers, one in the uh, Civil or the uh, civilian side, and one in the military side. Okay, the civilian side is the uh, merchant marine or the uh, seaman, where the military side is basically uh, the serviceman in either the army or the navy, either on the land or on the sea, and that covers basically the air force and the military because. Uh, and other Marines. Also in the whole scenario, and see uh, uh, the Coast Guard and everything else. Okay? Mr. Pat. Yes. Your minutes are extended. Use as you okay. choose fit. Well, we'll see.
see what happens. I might have to call back in. But uh, uh, I just want to get this thing out to you guys. That uh, right. And this, and this is a lot. And if you're short on time, I will, you've given us plenty to think about right now. Well, I gave you plenty to think about before. Most of this was already out here, but I just tried to reiterate the importance of this, okay? Yes. The importance of that, using that in all court cases about the conspiracy to defraud and that basically they are a counterfeit, that they're operating in a uh, counterfeit, and that you, and you're coming in as uh, this action was decided by Chief American Equity Bank Judge Mr. Patrick semicolon divine right i'm a chief judge i'm a chief in america of right. my private american international banking court and and just to get get in in the right role we need to make our own courtroom here each each of us have to have our own courtroom well, you do have it. Your living yeah. room, your your kitchen table, whatever. Okay, you don't need yeah. to. Okay. I can go out and buy me a gavel, though. Come on, Tom, get over okay. that. Okay. You're arguing. You're stating something that has no real bearing upon understanding. Okay. Yeah, on the understanding, but it 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 does. If for for me, having a picture like that uh, makes it a lot solider. Well, okay. sorry, you, sorry. You go out and get a you go out, go out and get a gavel, and you're sitting in a in a uh, uh, private uh, store, okay. And what do you have? You've got a counter that's made out of glass, and you start hitting your gavel on the on your counter, and you're going to break that glass. True. Okay. So you got to be careful about what the hell you're doing. So it's just a symbol. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick. Okay. Anybody else out there? Yeah. Have I scared everybody away? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Anybody else oh, have a question for me? Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Patrick, I got a question for you if ain't nobody caught in before me. Yeah, go ahead. What is this business about a 14th Amendment person cannot get, cannot in no way, shape, form, or fashion receive his sovereignty? Can, can what now again? A 14th Amendment citizen or a, a a slave, whatever, however that shit go. How come? How come it's been said that they cannot receive what what what, what, what we're trying to accomplish here? Because they do not have a free will of choice. Watch the movie Shortcut to Happiness. Watch the movie uh, uh, Adjustment Bureau. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's all about free will. Only the living has a free will of choice. Therefore, in our court of equity, it's all about our free will of choice and our fiction having no will. So there's only one ruling that can come out of our court of equity. And that is that basically the living wins every time, hands down. That's right. Yeah, Patrick, I, I got you. I, man, I, now I feel stupid because now I, I understood it completely. I, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, we're the winners when we wake up because we're the only ones that can win because it's by our choice that we decide to finish the race. They have no legs. Okay? They have no will to get across the finish line. Our fictional person.
And then we have to come in and start doing our countermands and our counterclaims against these uh, counterfeit and uh, uh, organizations out here, these other 14th Amendment government officials, and start going after them in that capacity. And that they're the ones that are violating the laws. They're the beneficiaries out here uh, because they're operating in a for-profit organization, but they're trying to claim that they are a uh, charitable organization. Therefore, they do not have to pay the taxes. We have to pay the taxes. So look up some of those words that I put out there tonight. Okay, I've told you before to get into the dictionaries. Stay out of the uh, codes of law. You're going to just confuse the living shit out of yourself by playing around in their world. And you'll never get out of their system if you're doing that. And then when we come in, we're doing this under a, uh, basically, they have, uh, we give them a 24-hour notice. Okay? They have three days to make the settlement on these items. But basically, they have 24 hours to either accept or reject our offer. Now, after they've accepted the offer, basically, then they have three days to uh, decide whether uh, they need to do a counter and send it back across the counter to us. But as soon as that document gets into the judge's hands, it's in his hands now, and you do not have to take it back. But if you do, you turn around, you make another counterman onto it, or counterclaim, countersigning. Yeah, Patrick, I was just thinking if you do an eject, ejectment, like an ejection out of a cockpit, it's pretty hard to get back in. That's right. Yeah, once you've ejected them out of your store, you've closed the door and they can't come back in. Now they're in a real trespass. of breaking and entering. You gotta love this shit when you really start thinking about all this shit. Mm-hmm. We've seen it in the movies out here numerous times over. I I understand the part about ejectment, but what about the possession part? The possession is like you're you're not possessing their documents for one, but you're possessing your your you're maintaining our your assets. own things. We are claiming our assets, our land, our property back into our possession. Right. They have to return it back to us. Okay. Perfect, perfect. I got it now. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else out there? And don't be afraid to pass this out to other people, okay? I have no copyrights on any of this shit, okay? You want to get it to uh, somebody you know basically out here that's arguing something in a different scenario, uh, uh, in a different court case, one of these other gurus that you have contact with, get it over to them. For years, I've tried to tell people that I have an open door for these other so-called gurus out here to come and talk to me. Hey. <clears throat> One time I talked to almost most all of the uh, different gurus. Roger Elvick, okay, I haven't talked to Winston, but basically uh, my door's open to him if anybody wants to get the stuff over to him if he really wants to have the real truth. 
I haven't talked to Rod Class, but I've talked to quite a few people that have dealt with Rod Class uh, out there, and basically he doesn't understand the law. He thinks he does. I've got people right here in my own backyard that sit out here, and they go in and they argue, and they argue about the 14th Amendment, about this garbage, about that garbage. And basically they're arguing all the codes of law out here. Those codes and stuff do not apply to us. And see, none of these guys ever understood that we are a court of equity and that we were given our court right back to us by the 11th Amendment. That's why in all the court cases I've gone to uh, the county, the district, the Supreme Court for the state, uh, the federal district court, uh, to the Court of Appeals, Federal Court of Appeals, to the Federal uh, Bankruptcy Court, to the uh, District Bankruptcy Court, to the Court of uh, Claims. But see, I was always going in there under equity. None of those courts have any jurisdiction over equity. Because that court belongs to us. We're the only ones that can probate anything properly. Therefore, the bankruptcy court out here, their counterfeit bankruptcy court, is a complete fraud. We had the power to adjudicate our own bankruptcy action and to do our own uh, probating because it's a living will versus no will. Hello? Yeah. Ash, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Yeah this, yeah, this is Kevin. How are you doing? I have one question I want to ask you. Go ahead. Uh, on the bill of exchange that you sent, the American PEO counter bank depository that you sent to the Treasury, is to pay to the order of would that be the Treasury or to yourself? It's going to be basically paid to, uh, uh, to our depository uh, mailbox. So the one you send, the real, uh, uh, Rosa Rios, would be the patron order of the... You need uh, to come in and you need to do a court ruling, okay? And then you need to send that in, not by, under your name or anything like that. You put it in an envelope and even your faxes. It is coming from clerk of the court, number PMB number, blah, 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 your zip code, and then care of this address and care of uh, this city and state, and then your five-digit zip code. And then you give them a phone number, okay? Now, they don't know who that came from. It's coming from a clerk of the court. Now, that is an office-to-office -office transaction. Okay, you go into the, you go into uh, 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 Walmart. Okay, are you dealing with the cashier or are you dealing with Mary Smith? You deal with the cashier. You're dealing with the cashier, the office. So in the public, they can only deal with the office. Okay. That is your hidden protection. They can't deal with the living person unless you get them behind the counter. Then it's a, a private to private transaction. Okay. 
You don't have to let anybody behind your counter if you don't want it behind your counter. Okay, any more? Hmm. Well, it looks like that's it, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. I'll try and get uh, this court okay. document and then basically uh, uh, a, a writ of ejectment, a judicial writ of ejectment and uh, possession uh, ruling that, uh, yeah, we send this all out and we send uh, our private uh, judicial writ of ejectment and, uh, to, and possession to our uh, uh, birthing state. Secretary of State to the state, uh, the Secretary of State that you're living in, to terminate all the uh, state governmental counterfeit insured instruments that you have, your certificate of live birth, your licenses, uh, your identity cards, your voter card, your uh, vehicle title, uh, your mortgage, okay, if it's through a state uh, mortgage. Uh, bank. If it's through a federal bank, I would send that to uh, uh, that mortgage or whatever, but you notify also the Attorney General on these items that you are uh, and you are revoking all underwritings, especially if they're over three years old. Okay? You have equity now that basically is there to pay anything out there, and you can claim all that equity back. See, it's all about equity that you have banked in their counterfeit world. And and we can do a court order and give ourselves the right to travel and support it with all that three pages of stuff the Supreme Court well, already does. we're not going to do that, okay? We're going to them, and we're going to – now we're going to say that, that uh, since we are a private international uh, American uh, – private American international bank, we need to have state – international documentation for our private as a private American international banker trader to operate within their state commerce, their public commerce. They have to supply that documentation to us so that now the state document is flashed in front of that other officer, and basically that other officer now has to stand down. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, but see, we have to go about this the right way. Okay. We can have our own documents, and basically uh, we've been right on in most all of what I've been doing out here. But now we have our court, and we can force that Secretary of State that we're going into the office from our clerk of the court order to that Secretary of State. Now they are in violation of an order of a clerk of court. Then you can basically bring in the enforcement of the U.S. Marshals or the Secret Service out here against them, or even the CID in their violation of the tax uh, codes of counterfeiting uh, uh, secured insured instruments. Yeah, now we can see the light is on. The clock is ticking. Patrick, so we have to. Yeah, go ahead. 
if someone issue if we get the uh, license issued from a state of Oregon and I travel in California, will there be a problem if I have to present that card? No, because basically this is going to be an international documentation. Okay. Okay. Issued by the state. Now, if you take up uh, a mail uh, bank, a PMB in uh, California, then you're going to have to go and approach that Secretary of State for their international uh, documentation to operate within that state. Oh, okay. Yeah, but as long as you're an a official international visitor into that state, no. You've got the one from your uh, state of where you have your bank, your PMB. And the PMB is the postal mailing? No, it's the private mail bank oh. or private mail box. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's your zip code plus your four-digit number, your bank number. Okay. Bank routing number. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now you showed us how to be king of the hill here, king of our own hill. Yeah. And it was all about trying to be a uh, private international, American private international, a private American international banker, trader, okay? And your fictional person is a bankrupt. And you have free will. He has no will. So you can live happily ever after, just like in the movie uh, Adjustment Girl. That you've obtained your free will, where most people only think they have free will, and they have never actually expressed their free will properly. Because they've not adjudicated it in their court of probate. We don't call it a court of probate. We call it a court of record, right? No, we'll call it a uh, basically a bankruptcy and probate court action. Okay. But ours is a court of equity, okay? Yeah, and our records are private. We don't have to put all of our records out on the public. Any more questions? Yeah, just take a look at that uh, affidavit. Okay, that's very big. You get that out there, and you you can do that affidavit and put that into uh, the court. Send one into the clerk of the court, but you send it in from your clerk of the court to their clerk of the court. You send it in from your clerk of the court into the sheriff's office. You send that affidavit in from your clerk of the court to the state attorney general's office. To the IRS, you go into the office of the IRS, the counterfeit public IRS. But you send it in from your clerk of the court. You give them notice. This is a clerk of the court's notice to them. Hands off of 
the banker, the trader, the private individual. You come after him, and we will end up in a civil court action. And basically, we will file charges at that point in time against you as being a counterfeiter and also operating in a conspiracy to defraud not only the living individual, but the United States of America. We will always bring our nation in behind us. I think that's the strong part. Yes. Not the country. The country is a fiction. The nation is the land. <clears throat> now the country is a counterfeit. <clears throat> Okay, we're ready, guys? Yeah, thank you very much. I think thank so. You. Okay. No other questions? Okay. Is, it the United, is it the United States of America or just the United States? The United States of America. We will spell it all out, okay? okay. So there's no misunderstanding. Okay. Okay. And that uh, basically there's three different usages of United States in uh, the statutes and everything that they have out here. And that's what most people can't see, the differences in uh, the three different usages of that. Okay. okay. I won't go into that. I think I've gone into that before. Yes. Uh, Trick, Ms. Gita, uh, how, when was it used United States of America different from just America? Well, basically, uh, the United States of America and America mean the same thing, okay? When they're used in uh, uh, the reference as our nation, okay? See, even a Canadian uh, is an American citizen, okay? They're not a citizen of Canada, okay? Canada is a country, a fiction, a chartered fiction organization. The United States, uh, basically by itself, uh, they put out there, the initial constitution was for the United States of America, the nation, to set up a civil government known as the United States. Then you have the 14th Amendment, United States, okay, which is all capital in most cases, or just U.S., okay, not U dot S dot. U dot S dot stands for United States of America. See, that's where you really need to look and you need to ascertain what the statutes are really saying and how uh, you need to be able to read between the lines in a lot of this process. Another thing, um, the categorization of America, North America, South America, Central America, how did they come to that? There are two continents, okay? Basically, uh, you have North America, and then you have South America, not Central America, okay? That was another setup <laughs> to try and uh, break things away in a different scenario, okay? And basically, Central America, uh, they tried to set up as uh, initially uh, the United States and Canada were North America. And then basically 
really Mexico and all the way down to Panama uh, became Central America under a different uh, jurisdictional regime. Okay. But really, uh, it was uh, for uh, the layout, it was uh, you've got basically 10 uh, different divisions around the world. We won't go into that, though. But it's interesting how the word America name is, like, put in there. Yeah. But right now, we don't need to worry about that. You just need to try and get mm -hmm. an understanding about your court, uh, your power as a, uh, American, a private American international court of uh, banking court, okay, of equity. Private American, okay. Right. Private American International Banker slash Trader Court of Equity. Along that line, okay? And then you are the chief judge of your court. based upon the fact that you're the only judge in your court, so you're the chief judge. You're really the chief judge, the chief plaintiff, uh, the chief clerk of the court. You're just a whole bunch of chiefs. Yeah. The ten little Indians. <laughs> How many uh, stories, nursery rhymes, and everything else have we been uh, told? Basically, that's where uh, the real understanding of a lot of this stuff comes from. But people overlook all that. Hello. Yeah. Star six when you answer the phone. Yeah, I got it. I'm looking for it. Hold on, I got need some. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Patrick. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll talk to you tomorrow night. We'll then. we'll work on this okay. and thank you very much. Okay, I'll try and get uh, some documents posted up there tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Okay. Yep. Good, night. Thank you. Good night, Patrick. Good night, Patrick. Geach, are you still there?